should have been stopping number three tonight. Do black Africans like neocolonialism? Do black Africans like neocolonialism? This came with a link. That's taking us to YouTube. Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. If you are in Nigeria, thanks for coming. So this channel is all about black love, African love, black businesses, and actually us growing as a people. In today's video, I'm going to talk about this issue that I've experienced. But before I get into my opinions, let's first watch the video and let's talk about it. There's this misconception that black Africans don't want to fight against neocolonialism and I think it's promoting white saviorism and western saviorism and that it's like okay we need to go back to the continent to tell people how oppressed they are. No, people on the continent have been fighting for themselves. Just looking at the South African context, we can look at the Marikana massacre, we can look at Peace Must Fall, we can even look at the GBV protests that we've had for years. Even looking at other African contexts, look at NSARS, look at the protests all over the continent against the exploitation of African professors. I think that people do not read people do not understand the african context and so because they are seeing certain things on tv because they've heard certain narratives being spread they think that they understand the continent and all that it is no you do not understand the continent you are looking at the continent from a very white supremacist elitist view and this is also me speaking to people that say that oh you know our parents were weak they didn't fight against apartheid enough okay apartheid and its systems are still alive and well in south africa fight against them then most of the times, because of the things that I talk about, black love, empowerment, black unity, us as a people to grow and move forward, some people feel like I'm so much concentrated on the diaspora or African-Americans, African descendants from Europe, Asia, America, South America. Like, they have to come and remind me on how I'm forgetting that Africa is being colonized again. Like, people come in the comments and on court, they tell me or they comment and say, you should concentrate on Africa because Chinese are coming to colonize Africa again. Other nations are coming to colonize Africa again. And it's like, I don't know that already. Like, I already know what is going on. But this is the thing that the South African lady is trying to say. We as Africans, I am a descendant from people of my ancestors. I found systems that were made for them that I'm still experiencing. I don't have the same mindset as my mother. In Uganda, where I come from, I used not to question myself until we got someone that was in kind of our age, and that is Bobby Wine. I think if you search about Bobby Wine from Uganda, you will find out who he is. When you look into the African continent today, we are a very young generation. And even in my country, I never wanted to talk about anything about my country, Uganda, because I always thought it was for older people. If you look into my country, Uganda, we've been with the same president for over 35 years, if I'm not mistaken, but I never questioned why it was like that because I never wanted to participate or even know anything about it because I felt it wasn't you know, something that matters to me. And also when I talk about education, I'll make another video about education because it's also another system that is really limiting us to grow as Africans. What she's trying to say is, Africans have been coming out to fight colonialism and want to unite as a continent. You need to understand from that diaspora, Africa was divided. I'm from Uganda. There are Kenyans, Nigerians, Ghanaians, South African, you know, Tanzania, Guinea, so many African countries, 54 countries. But we don't even connect as a continent because we were given boundaries. But I, as a person of the 1990s, I still found that system. And for people to come and remind me on how China is coming to colonize Africa, you think I don't know what is happening. But still, what do you want us as Africans to do? Because that also needs to be talked about. The same way we as Black people come out and talk about history on racism or things that affect us as Black people. Still, what do you want us as Black people to do? So when you come and remind me on how China is coming to colonize Africa again, do you think when China does it, it's going to benefit you as a black person from the diaspora? Because if you look into China, black people are still discriminated. 
in their home. If you look in commercials, if you look in the diseases, they are always portraying black faces in their countries. Are you going to still benefit or you're still going to be oppressed or under by other people that are controlling your ancestors' resources? Because Africa is your heritage. Those who believe it, not for everyone. Remember that. We are still going to talk about racism. What I'm trying to bring out is what the lady is saying is a lot of African leaders came out or have been coming out. Look at Gaddafi, look at Mandela, look at Lumumba. Those people, Kenyatta, look at Ida Mindada of Uganda. They were eliminated because they wanted to do good for their continent, for their countries. All these people that have been coming out to try to put Africa as one continent, as one home, as one place that we call home for African people. But they've been eliminated. But still, even the people that we elect to put into power, to give them leadership, they are sponsored by the same people that, you know, do shit in the continent. What do you want as Africans to do? We as Africans found systems that were put in place through generations of time. So when you come and tell me that I'm not even fighting the system, I feel kind of attacked in a way that we are trying. And what I want the diaspora people to understand, okay, let me give an example. I'm not trying to attack anybody. Let's say African-Americans, okay? You guys have been in America as a monolithic group because you are the minority but you are still seen as one group of people okay an example when you come in the continent i'm from uganda i have a different language kenya has a different language nigeria has a different language we are multi-cultured okay so also that limits us to even connect because we were also given boundaries that were not there. So that is also part of the problem. Our ancestors died and suffered for us to be here. We should do the same thing by making a good future for our future descendants. We as black people from the continent, we as Africans and the diaspora, we are still even having issues and have to fight to get recognition. I want you guys to understand when other nations of people, whether Asians or Europeans or any other race comes to Africa to take over, we as black people are still not benefiting, but you're trying to make me feel like Africans are not even trying. We like the systems, but Africans are dying every day. If you look in Congo, if you look in Libya, if you look in Somalia, if you look in even my country, Uganda, we are still not that fully free. I want you guys to understand a lot of African youth today are coming out to talk about African issues, African struggles. We as black people are always online complaining about discrimination, racism, systems that do not benefit us. My same question is, what should we do as black people? And what are we doing about it? Apart from just talking about it, I would say the generation of today in Africa is more smarter than any other generation that has ever happened in our African continent because we are the generation that is trying to promote love among us as Africans. When you go on social media today, you're going to see a lot of African creators promoting love among these other African countries. I think it's the generation that is trying to break generational curses where we are willing to unite with our African descendants. We are trying to let go of the fake religions. We are trying to communicate and promote love among us as Africans. We are trying to push so that we can have one African currency, one African language. We are the generation that is actually doing the most than our previous ancestral generations. They did their part, and I can never come here and say my ancestors or my parents never did what they did to survive. And so this is why I always want to come out and promote against us because we shouldn't forget our ancestors died for us to be here today. We should be the generation also to break the cycles that our ancestors passed through of pain, slavery and trauma and fear and war and a lot of racism so that we can change that narrative for our future descendants to come and find a better future, a better foundation that they can actually keep on moving for the future. We have the information, we know the truth, so let's start working on the future. We can talk about the past and keep the past in the books that we write ourselves, but also start writing the good future that our descendants can find 
and feel empowered and keep moving it to the future and future and future so guys that was it for today i hope i really tried my best to bring out some points that some of you might understand i don't know i don't want to force my agendas or my thinking to anybody but i do wish we could have conversations like this and have an understanding than just blaming games and if you've not subscribed please subscribe hit the notification bell please comment and tell me which ideas do you have that we should work on like what should we really do as people of the african continent what should we do as black people to change the narrative and so that's all i have to say and i'll see you in the next video in case of any support and sponsorships guys the links are in the bio bye yeah, so I let that play out to the end. Uh, you guys can check her out. Her page is uh, uh, Dagaya or Endagaya. Uh, do Black Africans like neocolonialism? You guys could subscribe or suggest ideas, etc. cetera. Uh, I also want to say before we begin the discussion, that woman looks exactly like black american sisters i've seen before right because there was this topic on forecasters show last night if you were there you know what i'm talking about she looks just like black american women i've seen and she damn sure looks like black caribbean uh women i've seen um if it wasn't for how she speaks i would not know the difference uh, same thing with this sister here so i just want to point that out Let's welcome in Brother Bakari this week. Brother Bakari, how are you this week? What's going on, man? What's going on? Peace to the chat. Peace to all my tether brethren. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> hey, you know what? See, I didn't know you were just talking about the Africans from the continent. I think black people like being colonial, being colonized all over the world. If we didn't, and it sounds crazy, right? But if we didn't, speaking here like where we are in the United States, if we didn't enjoy it, it wouldn't be so hard for us to spend our money together. We wouldn't think of reasons whenever you spend, talk about supporting black businesses, it wouldn't be so easy to think of all the negative from a lot of black people that's gonna come out of your mouth about a black business. But rush to give your money to an Arab because in the Orientals and the East Indians and the white folk, we are absolutely uh, colonized here, colonized there. We are colonized everywhere. And until we decide to do something else to get this from around, to get this uh, knee off our neck, I will say yes. African people on the continent and the diaspora, they we enjoy the. And I'm saying we, because I'm not excluding uh, and, and separating us from them, but the majority of us enjoy being colonized. We think it's great. You get to be next to other people. Uh, you get to give them your money. You get to brag on how great other people is. You get to talk about how bad your neighborhood is. When you get 50 cent, you enjoy to go live next to someone else. So I would say, yes, uh, our people uh, kind of enjoy being colonized. On that note, I get a mic. But, but Kari, before you yield, did you like the thing she was saying about what the elders and her country did and what the youth are doing now to continue to work? Did you like any of that? Oh, yes, I absolutely like what she said uh, in, in, in our elders and our ancestors need to be spoken of in, in more of a positive light instead of wanting to find the negative in everything that they did. Nobody is perfect. So when you're looking at us here on this social media thing, right, YouTube, whatever, it's always this, they did this and they did that and I'm not with that, and they sold us out. It's never the it's never what they absolutely did for us. And a lot of people complain and don't look and see a lot of the stuff that they enjoy doing is because of the ancestors. Uh, and in the fighting back, we most definitely 
need to let everybody know that our ancestors, our elders did fight back, did not just lay down. So, of course, I yes, I like that. I respect that. I appreciate that, Bakari. Yeah, uh, I posted in the community tab, Yvette Carnell, talking about the savage Africans selling uh, selling other Africans. And, and she had not a peep to say about the Europeans that created the conditions for those Africans to sell out, sell other Africans. Um, in the chat, I see we have a newcomer named Kate Thompson. Uh, shout out to Kate Thompson for being here. She says she's from L.A., California. Much appreciated. Thanks for coming through. Uh, Keta says, why do black people always want to be loved by other races? Use China to gain economical independence to defeat Wazungu. Every successful revolution had help from outside. Use the enemies of the U.S. slash E.U. He says, Russia, China, Iran, and Venezuela are all enemies of the so-called West. Cooperate with them to break this Western hold on the continent. The matron still with us in the chat. She says, many Black people like to see any race but Black in charge. There's also a segment of Black society that wants to be white, so they hate to see other Black people better themselves. Wow, I like that, matron. I'm going to leave that comment up for a little minute there. Hey, can, uh, I, can, I, can I say something? Uh, Bakari, go ahead. Responding to Ketter, uh, what you just read that he said, and now I see it. He, she, I really don't know, and I apologize if I got you wrong, right? But yes, Russia, China, Iran, I really don't think they're enemies of the so-called West. If you can use them to get somebody off your neck, use them, but be prepared to get them off your neck as well. Because if we thinking we're going to link up with someone because they are the enemy of the so-called West. We would just be putting ourselves under someone else's rule if we not if we have not prepared ourselves to uh, uh, take complete control. Because see, I'm, I'm fighting for power. And on that note, I hear the mic. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're not careful. We'll be the engine that runs socialism as well. So let's, uh, let's be prepared to, like Kenna says, use the help, but make sure you're doing it on the terms, uh, under the conditions that, that, that you prefer. Only you heard everything Makari had to say in the chat. What say you? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Oh, about the yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I remember watching this uh this, this show, and they're like, "Yeah, America." Like what Ked is saying, um, America had help from the French, you know, for its revolution, you know. But they also said, "Nah, we ain't we ain't doing your shit, France." You know what I mean? Like, like, like. I mean, I get that. Like, like I could see, like, if you if you know how to handle yourself afterward, and that's all fi fine. You know, I know this one scholar. He would say it's we got to talk about revolution and resolution, you know. Now I don't really know if the word resolution is all that good, but but basically it's like what happens after the revolution, you know? Uh, are you, you know, if you saying let's get China's help, you know, like help in what way, and then how are you gonna be afterward, you know? Uh, but as far as what this lady's saying, I felt like it was it was kind of long winded and ranty. I didn't know what she was ultimately saying at some points because like. At some points, it was like, like, I didn't really get it. Um, but I think one of the main things she said that, you know, kind of really irks me is um, how she's like, what should we do? You know, and that's one of the things that we as a black people have not really communicated well. You know, like, what should we do? You know, uh, somebody was telling me. Uh, Cause, cause there's this uh, author. Everybody loves him. In fact, uh, it, what's his face? Uh, um, author Zora was just mentioning um, him. Uh, Amos Wilson. He writes this book, Blueprint for Black Power. Uh, somebody, her brother was telling me today that Blueprint for Black Power probably works better in a majority black nation. Now, I don't know per se. I don't. I don't really agree per se 
But what I could say is that I like the title at least, you know, and I also like to say that, you know, that's kind of like what we like, like the thing I like about it is the ambition. I'm, I, it's unfortunate that he was like that. It was published post-mortem. So like he didn't really have a say in the final edit. But what I would say is that, you know, that kind of ambition, this idea that, you know, lay out a groundwork, lay out a blueprint for black folk. Like that is, I think that is critical. But my, 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 my you know, what, why I'm irked is because I feel like even if somebody were to publish a blueprint or anything like that, like most of us not reading or most of us not communicating along the lines of, of that kind of stuff. So I think that, you know, if nothing else, we have to focus on what does organization mean, but also what does it mean for us as a people to like, like if there are young people who really are saying, what should we do or what could we do? You know, here I have this 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 president who's been in power for 35 years. What can I do? You know, and and it's like, you know, I mean, obviously that's not in Blue for Black Power. That's not in any of the literature we have. And in, and and frankly, it's not in most of the conversation. So as I say that, if you're a Ugandan, you know, radical like she, you know, probably is right, or she's not a radical, but you know, if you wanted to be a Ugandan radical. You know, where do you, what do you look to? What inspires you um, to, to wake up and do some shit, you know? And, or like, like, how do you deal with your situation of, hey, I have this president for 35 years. What can I do? And so, you know, like, like for me, it's like, yeah, you know, that's really one of the troubling things about our situation on this world, in this world is that there are so many, um, you know, environments that we have as an African race that we are not offering solutions to. And not and even if we were offering solutions to, like the access to the solutions is not there, you know? So so what happens is that not just her, but like most young people, even elders, older people are just like, what should we do? And we get up with that paralysis of analysis, you know, where we all kind of just, you know, quarrel. We all just kind of think. We all just kind of mull. But, you know, it, it becomes, well, you know, just, a, 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 you know, it's just like it's like year 35 for this dude. You know what I mean? Year 35. And then what happens after? Year 36, you know, or, or if he passes away, you know, you get another person. And like, what, what role did you play as a you, young person in changing the destiny? You know, you did it. And so, like, it really makes the task ahead for us that much more difficult. Um and I, I, that's all I can say, actually. Oni and Bakari, I want to ask you guys a question. How do we deal with the you, – Oni, you just mentioned it. A lot of our folks aren't reading. Uh, how do we deal with that? How do we get this in, information to the to the folks who are not willing to read, who instead – in fact, I, I might have had this as a topic, maybe not this week, maybe it's for next week, uh, you know, where people prefer to look at YouTube videos and TikToks. How do we get people to read? That's my question. Bakari, I'll start with you. Uh, hit the streets. Uh, I believe we have to start doing stuff. We have to bring back some of the old stuff that we used to do, get on the streets, talk, uh, create some pamphlets, pass out the pamphlets, tell them what's in it, become the preacher. Not saying that we know church, but become the preacher and... <laughs> Become the preacher and just and do it that way. Get out there in the streets and talk to them, show them what we're talking about. Then give them small passages. Don't give them whole books saying, read this. So check this out. Uh, when, check this little bit out. When can I, uh, you know, when can I bump into you again or whatever, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what the Christians do, right? The Christians yeah. give all these little half of Bibles, pocket size, so it doesn't look like much to read. They give all these tracts and all that kind of stuff. That's what they do. I think that's a, I think that's something to keep in mind. Uh, only what to you? Yeah, I mean, I like the in-person thing routine, but like my thing is that because I'm retired <laughs> in America, uh, you know, I I don't personally do the in-person in America, and I couldn't do it in Tanzania because I didn't speak the language. Um, 
But like beyond that, like you said, like if people like YouTube and YouTube shorts and stuff, then just make compelling shorts that, you know, go along with it. Because what I could say um, is that I remember one time, um, I, I don't know, for some reason, I, I wanted to watch an anime or some shit, you know? Um, so I was on one of those anime websites and the socialist, some socialist, some black radical socialist party had an ad on this anime site. You know what I mean? Uh, not like black radical, but like kind of like Uhuru type shit, you know, Uhuru movement, maybe. I don't know. But like they, yeah, they, like, you know, you you could buy the ad space and have your, your your thing and like really, you know, provide a way. Now, how you could get around people not reading. I mean, that's really tough because, you know, like technically people got to read. But I remember um, like, in fact, you, you know, that boy. uh you know, you dig <laughs> the, that boy, uh, Tariq. He, uh, like, he, he, I remember when Hidden Colors first came out. I mean, because some, some dude decided to give me a free copy, and like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, like, I only saw the first one, but a lot of hood cats, um, did like his presentation style, his, his engaging style, his, you know, just his, his documentary, you know, uh, it's a joke. But it's like those are the, like those are the serious, like there's serious ways to go about it. I could say I'm trying to do a children's book, you know, and I'm not going to say that the children's book is going to reach a, a wide audience and it's going to be, you know, I'm not going to say that. But what I'm going to say is that if you go the multi prong angle, you know, you just do whatever it is you can and you just do it, you know, visibly. You know, you have that compelling, cool short. You have that compelling, cool ad, and you just put it out there. Uh, I mean, it's going to cost you, obviously, but you you put it out there and you just play this white boy's, um, you know, advertising um, platform, right? Or this white boy's love of money against himself. Now, it's probably not going to work perfectly, and this white boy could always deceive you with how many people he shows it to. But, you know, it's like it's like enough people doing it, enough people trying like there's no there's no harm no foul but but the the issue returns to you know generally speaking we don't even have a consensus among ourselves as to what to do or what to think or what to believe you know and and because we don't have that consensus you know it becomes that you know you're going to have people pushing the narrative or you think oh like you know seemingly pushing the narrative forward and then other people are going to look at it like what the fuck are you talking about like 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 brother Bakari was putting this video up today where this 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 matter of fact this black woman this same you know woman in Africa who's also you know being accused of being obsessed with African American culture she's like I'm trying to teach African American history and all that stuff blah 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 I think African Americans are great and she's showing this video of this African American talking about you know history like like she's she's promoting black history and she's showing the video and the video is this dude talking about oh when black Americans saw the Africans were coming to America. We feel bad because they were all slaves. And you're like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? But like, it's like, you know, he's he thinks he's pushing the message. He's doing the compelling, interesting video. And it's some dumb shit, you know? So it's like, like, like that's where we are, where we are a saturation of misinformation. And and so, you know, how do you how do you how do you navigate that? You know, like how do you win when people who are who are who who probably are on your side, right? Or who probably would be on your side are also just pushing misinformation you know Un unintentionally so like it's it's tough but you you know i think i think what what brother mccarty was saying about meet them on the streets like that's what you probably have to do can, can i say uh, 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 uh yes sir go ahead uh and this is to matron what she said in her uh uh, uh when you read that she is right is a lot of people don't want to a lot of our own don't want to see us do good and i absolutely agree with that they would rather hate would rather hate on one another than to see somebody do something then i want to when oni said with her being from uganda where's her uh what what could she read or whatever what could she draw inspiration from i think sometimes we can look and say this person was bad 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 but can we draw some inspiration
from what that bad, bad person did. Uh, and what I mean is, with her being from Uganda, and I don't think Idi Amin is bad, <laughs> me personally, but I think we have to, she should be able to draw some inspiration from what Idi Amin did when he kicked out when he kicked out all of the foreigners out of his country. And according to some people that I've met and I know personally who was not from Uganda, who was over there, you know, lived during that time, so they remember that Idi Amin, one was from Kenya, the other one from Rwanda. They remember Idi Amin reaching out to black people in other countries. So he ended up growing up in Uganda because Idi Amin reached out to black people in Kenya and told them they could come start their business in Kenya. I know everything that we hear about Idi Amin, me personally, I don't necessarily believe it all, but I'm just saying, even if let's say half of it is true, what about the other half and can you draw inspiration or do we just hold on to this person is so bad that I don't want nothing from them? Because these people here, Throughout history, I try not to speak on that I don't follow, but I could still see what they did good and copy what some of our people did, even though I don't follow them, if that makes sense. And I hear the mic. No, I appreciate that, Bakari. You know, it's one of the interesting things, too, that I don't think we consider a lot. Uh, a couple months back, I was in an Uber and the guy who was driving was a continental African. So and he's from the same place uh, where Thomas Sankara is from. So I was I was there talking, uh, ready to talk high praises of Sankara, man. This dude launched into a Sankara was the worst, blah, blah, blah. And I find I found that that's kind of a regular thing. Like we in the West, we have certain perceptions of folks, but the folks on the ground who live through the reign of some of these folks that we hold kind of high. Uh, you know, a lot of them don't hold them as high at all. I, I remember a guy one time, this was years ago, a guy was, was like down in Patrice Lumumba one time, a guy from the Congo. It, it's interesting. It's interesting how we have a per certain perception and they have a, a totally different perception and somehow we need to we need to work on on the collective perceptions because all this confusion is what's stopping us from really doing anything i think you know all these opposing ideas and forces and whatnot is kind of holding us back uh does anyone here want to have a last word on this prompt if not um Let's go to Shoot the Breeze topic number four tonight. You'll notice in the chat, guys, that we're making incredible time. Oh, by the way, Sister Raw said that um, they say it's our humanity, uh, and we don't know who to show humanity towards. We we show humanity towards everyone else but our own selves. So uh, I appreciate that, Sister Raw. <clears throat> 